Uh, we need to talk about the sad news, Cass, that emerged um, in the week, and that was the death of Pele, a true footballing great. And uh, the outpouring of admiration and, and respect has been, well, evident throughout the world, really, over the past 36 hours. When it was announced, um, the president of Brazil announced that they were going to have a, a three days of national mourning. I think his funeral will take place uh, early next week as well. Um, like I say, an outpouring of love, mm. of admiration, of just such affection for someone that broke onto the world stage at such a young age, the only person to have ever won three World Cups as well. Your thoughts then on, on Pele, the footballing icon that, that he was? Um, well, he was the, one of the first players I ever saw um, in the 1970 World Cup final because I was in the Elephant and Castle and around my grand and nana granddads who were Italian and they were cheering on Italy and as they were getting stuffed by Brazil and Pelé was, unlike a number of other of his colleagues, was in that team. Mm -hmm. And the yellow and it was in Mexico City and it was just uh, an incredible... You could feel it, you know, what... Especially, I mean, I know it's Central America, uh, Mexico, but what that does, that continent in, in, mm. in South America generally does anyway. And I I was privileged. I watched Johan Cruyff as a young boy become a great player. Pelé was the most athletic player I've ever seen. And there's one thing that I played professional football. I played pro professional football for 18, 19 years. Mm. And my best asset, my best attri attribute was heading the ball. Mm. He could head a ball better than me. I couldn't do anything better than him. Couldn't run quicker. I couldn't con control the ball technical-wise. He's incredible athleticism. And I was outstanding in my time at heading the ball. He could head a ball better than me. <laughs> and that was something I always remembered about him. And I, I, I love this year, Nat, that I watched the Pele documentary. Yes. Because I really enjoyed it. Because I thought it was going to be a bit bland and then... The story or the backstory behind the 1970 World Cup final, where it was under dictatorship Brazil in '68, and watching Pele juggle with authorities and really being forced to come back and play because he'd retired, and then come back and win the World Cup in '70. Mm. Amazing player, and we're all going to look. And I see the list now, all in front of me of greatest players and. Jeff Powell, who's in the mail, has got him as number one, Diego Maradona and Lionel Messi and many others, Ronaldo. And, and it's it's a little bit unfair because he did things that shoot him from the halfway line and he dribbled past people, he flicked the ball over people's heads. He was doing that in the late 50s. Yeah. <laughs> he was doing it like 20 years ago. But, I mean, but, but this is a lot of people have remarked on that about what he did when he was playing has just sort of led to what people do nowadays or yeah. they're trying to emulate in the best way that they can um which is an honor in itself and i i think you know someone like cristiano ronaldo has mentioned that in his tribute to him on social media for example um do you know what i, I read a story about him which i thought was so lovely and so humbling about him and i really genuinely hope it's true and i think it is because this is a guy that said he wrote one of his autobiographies alongside pele right. and he said um one of the days he said i remember most of fondly when I was working with Pele was when he opened his briefcase he took out a wooden spinning top and he said he carried it everywhere he went and whenever he checked into a new hotel room he would spin it on the floor so at one point obviously this this um Alex Bellos uh he said I obviously asked him you know why do you have this spinning top and he said I like to keep this so that it keeps me grounded it links me to my childhood um, in the mm. backwoods of, of Brazil. Um, and he says he always likes to be known as Pele, but when he spun that top, he was Edson. Edson Arantes do Nascimento. It just kept him grounded. Yeah. And I like that sort of humility that he showed because he was this global icon that burst onto the scene at such a very young age and achieved so much in his career. Mm. But also not just in footballing-wise. I mean, he was a great um, advocate of of social rights for everybody and was an icon for being a black footballer as well in Brazil. So there was a lot he did away mm. from the pitch that was massively important because he felt that was a, a part of his a part of his role really. He knew he had a massive platform that he could use to try and help people. 
And I think that just that little story that I read there, I thought that is such a lovely story. Yeah. That he needed, he wanted to sometimes just feel as though he was Edson and not Pele. Yeah. I love that. Well, he, he admitted later on in his life that he could have done more, but he was always used as a political pawn in some way. He certainly was yeah. happening around him when Brazil wanted him to come back and he never said too much. He was very careful and he chose his words because there was always an agenda around Pele. Yeah. When you're that pow or that powerful as a person and you're an icon of the level that he was, people want you and need you to be on their side. And Brazil as a country used Pele. Mm. And he didn't, in some quarters, because it, it talked about this in the documentary, in some quarters, some of the Brazilian fans didn't think as much as Pele as what they should have done. But years later, he admitted he could have done even more. But he was always entangled in or embroiled in problems oh. within Brazil. I was going to say, if you're used as a political pawn, it's quite hard, isn't yeah, it? You're yeah, exactly. Uh, pulled Unfortunately, here, there, no. and everywhere. But there's been so many fascinating stories and, and insight about Pele on Talk Sport. Game Day Breakfast with Natalie Sawyer and Tony Cascarino. Saturday mornings from 6 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.